Wait, there was a text I had to check. No. Hey everybody, it's me, Lauren from Hop for Food, back with another recipe. This is the series where I show you how an idea develops into something delicious. I don't know what I'm going to make today, hence recipe. I'm just gonna go through my kitchen, pantry, fridge, the whole thing, see what I got, come up with some spark of inspo, a creative nugget from the universe, and then create a recipe from scratch without measuring or really keeping track of it. So this is for the hardcore hot for foodies. You've been asking for these. It's been a while since I've done them. And this whole month is a recipe theme. Four episodes, brand new, just for you. So as always, we go to the fridge first. Now in this episode, I don't have any additional secret ingredients from um, the lovely woman on my team who snuck some stuff in last week that we used. Truth be told, this has been taped directly following that episode. <laughs> so the same stuff is pretty much still in here, but I remembered there were some other things I wanted to use that I had, like this half-half pint of blueberries. We need to use those. I have lots of limes for some reason, I think because I made margaritas. So we could always use some zest for something. I've got a grapefruit, I've got some apples. I don't know, I'm in the fruit drawer. Yeah, I'm feeling the fruit vibe. I'm not going in the veggie drawer. I'm just trying to go opposite of what I pulled out of here last time. Let's go to my baking cupboard. Chickpea flour, rice, cornmeal, egg replacer. We're not gonna use rice. Cornmeal though. Corn could be interesting because you can make sweet corn stuff. Like it doesn't have to be cornbread, but I've never made like a cake with corn or a cookie with corn. That's a thing, isn't it? If anything, I think we have to mix flour with corn. I don't think we can go full corn. There's no gluten or anything to hold it together. But corn cake or corn cookie with blueberries in it, I think that could be pretty tasty if I made a cookie that had lots of sweet, even like a sugary, um, crunchy crust on it with the blueberries embedded in it. And I've never made anything like that. That could be cool. I actually want to look up corn cookie because the corn cookie they make at Milk Bar, Momofuku Milk Bar. Ooh, they're like a snicker doodle. This is what I picture, but with blueberries in it. Freeze dried corn powder, baking powder, baking soda, salt, flour, sugar, egg, butter. So we could very much follow my existing cookie recipe from the cookbook, but replace some of the flour with corn. And if we want it to taste real corny, can we add real corn in? Yeah, 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 yeah. Corn! So wouldn't this just be the same thing if I pulse this into powder? Okay, I'm gonna try this. I think I'm gonna do a half batch of my recipe because I don't have that many blueberries. My oatmeal, chocolate chip oatmeal cookie recipe makes like four dozen cookies, so we only need half the amount. I mean, I weirdly feel like lime zest could go in this cookie. We'll keep that in the back of my mind here. Okay, let's get out the stand mixer and do this. So I think I'm gonna just get the corn, the frozen corn, it has to be frozen, uh, dust it up into a powder using the food processor, but then I was wondering if it's just possible to make the whole cookie thing in here because then I don't have to use two appliances. So hopefully we can do that. I feel like if I get the dust, take it out and then put the butter in here, get the cold butter going and then put the dust in with the butter, maybe that makes sense, I don't know. Why don't I just put two thirds a cup of kernels in and see what happens. <laughs> now do you think because there's water in this that's gonna be an issue? I mean, this seems like the same thing to me. It's like corn dust. It smells like corn, that's good. Look at that, so it's cold and dusty. I've got margarine and butter. There is a difference, so the butter is more cold and solid, which is better for this. So I'm gonna add a vegan butter into here and I am going to do a half batch of my original cookie recipe, so I'm gonna do half a cup of butter. I am very excited because I just feel in my bones that this is gonna work and it's gonna be very tasty. So usually when I bake, I always take my existing recipes and I modify them because baking is like such a weird science. Like you're not always needing to start from scratch. You know the texture of one thing, so you kind of know how to adjust it for something else. 
maybe you don't, but with practice you do. So we're gonna kind of put chunks of this in here and we're gonna whip air into it. The corn flavor will get right into the butter. Yeah. Yeah. So this is what you want. You want this like butter to be whipped and have air in it. Oh my God, this is so cool with the corn in it. Let's make a flax egg. So, where do I do egg replacer? <laughs> I'm gonna go with egg replacer powder this time, guys. Gut feeling. One egg is one teaspoon with two tablespoons of water. You wanna like combine this, cause it's like when you make a cornstarch slurry, same thing, you don't want lumps and stuff. I'm just gonna consult my own cookbook, cause I forget the amounts of the other things I use. Vegan Comfort Classics, 101 recipes to feed your face. Oh, I used flax in those. <laughs> well, whatever. We're still gonna do one egg, I don't know. Just roll with it here. Half the amount of flour is one cup of flour, so I'm just gonna go three quarters of a cup of flour and one quarter cup of cornmeal. And I think we could just, I'm just gonna put it all in. A quarter cup of cornmeal. I'm gonna do half a teaspoon of baking powder and baking soda. I'm still gonna do the full amount of salt, which is a quarter because salt and corn still goes together. Forgot the sugar. I was supposed to cream the sugar in there or whatever. Let's get the sugar. <laughs> Let's do half brown, half white. Please work. Egg replacer powder. Before I add the flour, I'm just gonna whiz this a little bit. Interesting. Vanilla extract, eyeball that. Half a teaspoon. <laughs> and flour. I think it needs lime zest. I don't know why I think that. Cause I just licked the side and I like, I got like what felt like there was a limey taste. <laughs> And corn and lime, like if I was making tacos, corn, that's all that a taco is. Now, I don't know how blueberries comes into all this other than I need to use them. Maybe it brings out the corn taste more. I'm just gonna pulse. It's a little bit of a soft dough. I wanna put it in the freezer. Maybe we'll add the blueberries first, obviously. Actually, what we're gonna do is make the cookies on the parchment line baking tray, place the blueberries, freeze the tray, then bake. And because this dough's quite soft, I feel like it needs to be firmer going into the oven. But we can spoon it onto the tray, no problem. Okay, let's taste this. Yeah, the lime is the game-changing part of this cookie. I've got my dough, I just put it in the fridge for a few minutes as I prepared my baking pan and everything. So cool that I just made it in the whole food processor. I've never done that. Make sure it's well combined. This looks like the right texture to me. The only thing I think we're definitely just gonna have to freeze these for like, ugh, I don't know, maybe an hour in the freezer before baking. Maybe only half an hour. I'm just gonna put the blueberries in manually. <laughs> I'm just a little bit worried about them well, I suppose I could mix it in. Okay, let's be adventurous and just fold them in gently. I'm taking a handful. This looks like about half a cup. Anywhere between half a cup and three quarters of a cup, I'm sure is fine. I'll leave a few to push in. That's what I say to do with the chocolate chunks in the other cookie recipe anyways. So now just gently, gently fold in. I have leftover demerara sugar from when we did the apple cheese danishes, so I think that's gonna be nice on the top of the cookie too, to give it a nice crunch. So, take your cookie scoop, or if you don't have a cookie scoop, that's fine. And I want them to flatten out the way they look anyways in the Momofuku version. So, whatever this full scoop is, it's like two tablespoons. Now, I'm gonna leave a lot of space because I don't wanna screw these up and have them all smush into each other. And I'm kind of just very detailed, like I'm very carefully looking at like how many blueberries are landing in the scoop. <laughs> so 
So this looks, okay, I have like enough for about two or three more cookies in here. So I'm saying it makes 12 to 14, 12 to 15. But just because this looks so pretty and I rearranged the lumps on here, I wanna keep the cookies as 12 on a tray. But there is left over here. I'm just not gonna bake this. I'm gonna take these little handful of extra ones and just press them into the tops. I'm not flattening these because I think they're gonna flatten themselves in the oven when you bake. Now some of the Demerara sugar on the top. We only need a couple tablespoons total divided between the 12. The most important thing right now is to put this in the freezer. I'm not sure for how long, but I'm thinking at least 30 minutes. Even if you kept them in there for longer and they were like, almost totally frozen, that would be fine because the dough, you know, when I freeze my s'more cookie dough or my chocolate chip cookie dough, it never actually gets solid, like rock solid. It always is a little pliable because of the butter and the sugar and stuff, um, like Play-Doh. Don't worry about leaving them in the freezer for too long because I think you can just put this right in the oven at 350 and bake them. So I actually did a little test with that excess dough and I put it on a tray, I didn't freeze it at all. And they spread out quite a bit and got thin, but I actually sort of like it. And I had a little piece of chocolate in the fridge that I just chopped up and sprinkled on top. So these look so cool. Uh, I kind of like how thin they are. And I took them out at about 14 minutes, just as the edges were getting um, golden brown. And then I let them sit on the parchment line tray for about five minutes and then lifted them off to cool on a rack. And right now they're like, They'll probably get a little firmer in the center, but they're soft in the center. Now, these remind me of like a lace cookie because they're so thin. The lime is in there with the chocolate. I think lime and chocolate, they go together, don't they? <laughs> oh God. So it's got a nice crispy edge there. Mmm. What the heck? So I don't even think, it's been about 20, 25 minutes that those other ones have been in the freezer. So I'm actually gonna take them out right now, throw them in the oven at 350. I'll try 14 minutes. It might be a bit longer since they're cooking from frozen or from a little bit colder. Mmm. Oh my God, they're so neat. Mm. And you can make it with chocolate instead of blueberries if you want. I'm really excited to try the blueberry though. Oh my God. Obsessed, new favorite cookie. You know what would be cool? Also, if, if you took like, um, I thought maybe they did this at Momofuku, but I don't actually know. Take the cereal. Almost tastes like Fruit Loops because of the lime. So I was thinking like, if you took Fruit Loops and ground them up into a powder or like small chunks and sprinkled that on the top and then bake them and then you get this like rainbow speckled corn cookie, which would be so cool. I'm putting that in my next cookbook, so stay tuned. <laughs> oh my God. these interesting blueberry corn cookies, y'all. I'm pretty pleased. Now, what I will say before I even taste is that these cookies have cooled the same length of time as the chocolate one. The chocolate one is very sturdy, holds together nicely, you bite into it, it's soft in the middle, crispy on the outside. These are a little flimsier and it's because of the fresh blueberries. So I would say we should have used dried blueberries, but I don't have any. But if you make these, definitely use dried because there's too much moisture in the fresh 
And although I think these are still going to be good, I think dried would just make all the difference and it would have it hold up like this. Now you could see that I was, they all smushed together. Do not put 12, I had a huge baking tray and I put 12 on. You want them to be nice and round. Like this, it's so funny, the test one is the best one. The ones I was actually making kind of, you know, they're not that great. This one that didn't get touched looks nice, but it is flimsy. So anyway, let's do a little taste -a I do like this corn cookie idea though. I think I still like the chocolate better almost. Now you don't even need to refrigerate them or freeze them for as long as I did. It made no difference. These are the same thinness. In fact, they're almost thinner. The bake time I'm thinking is anywhere between 14 and 17 minutes, depending on A, how many are on one tray and how chilled the dough is. But having not refrigerated at all, and it was still like fairly cold because of the frozen corn we pulsed into there, this turned out the best. And it had the most space to bake. So, you know, you don't really need to bother with the chilling. I think I'd like to test these further, which I will for my upcoming cookbook, because I'd like to see what happens if I add just a little bit more flour make a firmer dough, roll it in a ball, roll it in sugar, press it on the tray, and I think they'll turn out like my ginger cookies. Anyway, this was quite a baking success story right here on recipe. I love the corn and the cookie. Mmm. And I guess thanks to uh, Milk Bar for the inspo. I'm here every Wednesday, cooking up vegan love, and for the rest of June, only doing recipe. You got two more brand new episodes coming your way for the rest of the month. What will I make? I have no freaking idea. That's the whole point. <laughs> Let me know what you think in the comments below about these uh, corn cookies with blueberries, corn cookies with chocolate. Check out my cookbook, Vegan Comfort Classics, 101 Recipes to feed your face for more cookie recipes, more sweet things, and great vegan baking ideas. Now that you're all settled in watching Hot For Food, why not check out more of my magical recipe episodes right here and right here. Keep going with the fun, get inspired, and get cooking vegan in your kitchen. I'll see you guys next week.